Hello, Arid. So, look what we've got here. This little fella is something that a boss is calling a new era of fun to drive. We'll see about that. And in order to help us see, look what we've brought along as a reference. The old era of fun to drive, but in its newest, finest, and very possibly last form. So let's explain what on earth we're doing here. You know the hot hatch, right? You take an ordinary hatchback, you make it look faster, and you make it go faster. Voila, high performance for a modest-ish budget. Ish being the operative sound in at least one of these cases, as you'll discover. Anyways, in the Abarth 500E here, we technically have the world's first electric hot hatchback. Again, technically, there are, of course, plenty of other fast electric cars with hatchbacks. But this is a hot hatch because they've taken a Fiat 500E up the power significantly, made the suspension all hard, chucked some styling stuff at it, and painted it some very bright colours. So that's that, but behold this bright blue ballistic beast. Anyway, this is peak hot hatchback. Let's go through it. Yes, brand new Honda Civic Type R, a model that's been around since 1997 and is beloved of anyone that grew up playing Gran Turismo or who still wears a full tracksuit as an adult. In short, the Type R has always tried to be the most riveting fast hatchback to drive and it's usually succeeded. But as that guy with the harmonica sang, the times they are a changing. EVs are a thing. Within a generation, all fast hatchbacks will be powered by electricity and cars like this will be gone. Like so that was a very long exposition for a video that essentially asked the question, are hot hatches gonna suck from now on? Yeah, so this isn't a fair fight, I know this, right? The Type R has more than twice the power of the Abarth for a start, and it's been honed over generations, literally decades on a track. This one, they've basically taken the latest Civic, which is Mint, stuffed an improved version of the last Type R's engine into it, which was also Mint, then refined the whole lot for speed and driving lols in virtually every way. Like, take the gear knob. Honda has made it a few grams heavier than the last Type R's gear knob so that it feels better, like heftier, when you shift gears. Basically, there hasn't been this much dedication to fun since a cartoonist called Walter decided to open a theme park. But Mickey Mouse is the last thing you would say to describe this. It's just like proper serious when it comes to the basic art of turning left or right. It's just all the contact points, the feeling you get through the steering and the gear shift and the pedals. It's all just dead weighty and it's really tight and it makes you feel like you're in proper control of the whole thing all the time. I mean, the right quality is harder than solving a Rubik's Cube with one hand, but of course that is deliberately designed to make you properly feel the road. If a normal hatchback is like walking in a pair of Nike Airs, this is like sprinting in your socks. And at the heart of it is an absolutely phenomenal engine. <laughs> Basically, it's a humble two litre thing, but it's got a big fat turbo on it. But it's special because relatively humble engines with big fat turbos on them tend not to respond that well to being revved really hard. They usually have loads of torque, so they shunt you forward at low revs, and then they kind of start to die out quite quickly. This one, though, keeps going right up to 7,000 RPM. <laughs> And that high revving characteristic is exactly what the best sports car engines are supposed to have, really. You get louder and more ferocious as you accelerate, and then you change gear and you start the process all over again. And you just want to do it over and over and over again. You do pay for it though. Wait for it. £50,000. Yep, it's mental that, innit? That, my friends, is a Gucci shell suit away from a new Porsche Cayman. Yikes. And so we come to this. Now again, this is the start of an era, and this, the Type R, is arguably the end. The pinnacle, the moment just before the big star implodes into a black hole. So what we're not asking is whether this is as good as that, like for like, that would be a stupid question. What we are asking is, does this bode well for the future of hot hatches once they become electric? So let's drive it and find out. Christ, I got that in one go, thanks a lot. <laughs> No. <laughs> well, we've got it in the bag anyway. What I will say from the start is that that noise is 
proper irritating. <laughs> this constant. <laughs> Basically, I'm just going to tell you what's happening here. You come down to an event like this, haven't driven the car before, you write an outline of a script because you kind of know how the thing's going to go, how this is going to feel. I made some assumptions, one of which was about the sound of the thing being really good. And you might think it is. Some people will think it's great, right? Fair enough. But I was going to do driving impressions, right handling and all that stuff. And then neatly segue into the sound of the thing. And I was going to do it as follows. And you'll probably notice that it's making a noise too. Like a petrol car. Weird. Yes, weird. One of the big appeals of a hot hatch is having a proper loud and terrifying exhaust. To that end, the Civic has three exit holes. Teehee. And they sound mint, but EVs don't need an exit hole because there's nothing to exhaust out of them. Now a Bath knows this, it knows how non-exciting the sound of silence is. So what it's done is it's put a speaker under the back bumper here that projects an exhaust sound of sorts. It's horrible that. I'm gonna turn that off, hang on. Okay, so electric features, external sound. Uh, right, start again. Along similar lines, when you get into this and you turn it on, it gives you this. That's a rock guitar sound. I think it's meant to be exciting, but it's not very modern, is it? For me, it would have been better if they'd just gone all in and done this. To go. And now we'll carry on. <laughs> what does it drive like? Well, it is quick, proper responsive. And actually, that's gonna be a really key selling factor for this car because so many hot hatches, like the Civic Type R, just can't like use them to their full potential because you have to wring them out so much. Whereas this thing, it's like the opposite of that. Anywhere from 0 to 40, 50 feels rapid. In fact, it feels like it's got a little bit too much torque for its front tires but that's a good thing because it gives you that like excitable scrabbly little dog feel that you want from a car like this and i have to say as well the steering has a lovely feel to it like the wheel itself feels great but just the way it turns a corner it feels dead sharp like dead alert it's a lot of fun this thing this thing feels alert in a very different way and it's a way that an ev will never be able to truly emulate arguably as good as the abarth is and it really is good i'll come back to it what it tells us is that an ev will only ever really be able to try and copy the things that are so good about the quote real thing they're a tribute act they're an oasis and there are some things that they just won't ever be able to do like have a manual gearbox which is historically one of the main appeals of a hot hatch and especially when the gearbox feels this good but is that such a bad thing an ev technically could have a manual gearbox but a it doesn't need one so it would be more tribute actory if you like and b automatic gearboxes are more popular in quick cars now anyways a hot hatch doesn't have to be an actual race car it just has to again look and feel fast most of the time you're just going to be you know shopping with it or whatever and the idea of a hot hatch is to make that boring stuff more palatable like driving it to morrison's and then when you're looking at it on the way back out of morrison's in the car park both those things should feel good and that's the sort of thing that the abarth does really really well now again this is not a like for like twin test i'm not saying that this thing even can be as good as that thing they're not even really the same sort of car so this is a family hatchback basically and this is a runabout this holds a lap record at the nurberg thing and this appears about as suitable to a track as i am after a big sunday dinner Although that said, a Bath does have race heritage and you can feel it, you can feel it in the same way as you can in the petrol Abarth. The Abarth 595 is almost catastrophically bad ergonomically if you're as tall as me, but it just feels a bit mad in the way that a small hot hatch should. This doesn't feel quite as mad, it feels a bit more cultured, but it has that edge to it. The sort of car that you just really want to chuck around, you know? You can like tell that the people that develop this really care. Like the steering feel is good, the way it turns in is good, it's got lots of grip. They've improved it in the way that matters, it's got better tyres, good weight distribution, all that stuff that makes a car handle well they've thought about. And what's also good is that by nature, electric power makes for a car that feels super sharp. So even like low powered electric cars feel responsive as soon as you put the accelerator down, they go. That basically makes it more fun for more people 
more of the time. Now, I honestly think that the Fiat 500e is one of the best small runabouts on sale today, electric or otherwise, because unlike the petrol 500, which is older, it's got a driving position that's suitable for real-sized adults, and the cabin quality has taken a massive leap. So, the starting point, the fundamentals here, are good. And for all that I've criticised the sound stuff, you can't make a petrol car sound like a spaceship, can you? Which you can with this, so I'm sure at some point in future, We'll do like some sort of sound pack that you can pay for or you can subscribe to. The possibilities are endless. <laughs> so it has driving modes. You use this little E mode thing to flick between them. So there's three of them. Turismo, which is just like standard street mode where the steering feels a bit lighter and everything just all together feels a bit more soft and gentle. Up through. <laughs> Scorpion Street. Scorpion Street gives you a little bit more torque, so it's actually a bit quicker. And also it gives you a stronger regenerative braking effect, you know, for the streets. But then you go into its most sportiest mode, Scorpion Track, and that takes away the regenerative braking effect. I'd probably have it in this mode most of the time. It's when you haven't got the noise piping through, so it's still really quiet. Just makes the steering feel that bit sharper. It's quicker, it's got more torque in this mode, and it feels more like a quote, natural car. You lift off, and your freewheel. But whatever mode you're in, what I would say about this is that it has a very pleasant balance between just generally feeling like a nice little city car like the Fiat 500 does, but then feeling sharp enough and quick enough. You actually sit quite high in this car and it's got quite a lot of glass so the visibility is really good. It almost, from the driver's seat, has the feel of like a mini SUV, which is kind of antithetical to being a sports car but in this it just somehow works. What I'm saying basically is that this proves that the basic aims of a hot hatch can be acquired or attained rather with an electric car as the base. As compared to a Fiat 500e, this is quicker, more fun, more entertaining, just plain more exciting, you know? It is, it is actually dead good fun. It's that thing where you come out of like a sharper corner, you put your foot down, boom, just goes, it's mint. And for this, £34,000, which might seem a bit high for such a tiny car, but actually it's the same price as a top-of-the-range Fiat 500e, or a basic electric Vauxhall Corsa. Uh -huh. But there is still an elephant in the room, or a scorpion in your salad, if you like. It's the battery range. The only reason you wouldn't want to do long distance in this is because the battery's not good enough for it. And that'll improve quickly, even in the smallest cars. In a few years time, cars like this will have batteries that are easily able to do more than 200 miles in the real world. And again, talking about that balance that a hot hatch has to have of being just a practical thing basically, but also being fun. This is very comfortable. I could see you being able to sit at 70 in this until the battery runs flat. Not that you'd want to do that, but you know, for like a long distance. Ride quality is on the firm side, it's a bit bouncy. It's certainly nowhere near like a Civic Type R where you're really getting chuddered around, but it might get a little bit irritating, a little bit bobbly for you, but actually you would still say that it's generally comfortable. It's not so hard that you feel like you're making comfort sacrifices for the sake of it being a bit quicker than a Fiat 500 electric. This dreadful long distance car. Dreadful. So I drove 250 miles in this to get to the Abarth event. So I always have to drive miles because I'm from Newcastle Lake. <laughs> Nothing happens up here. The noise is horrendous. The tires are roaring, the engine's booming, and the constant judder of the suspension is just tiresome, even when you've got it in its, quote, soft mode. It's got driving modes, this thing. Proper R mode that makes everything all tight. Like I said, it's serious. Honestly though, this is a proper road tester cliche, but I had backache within about 50 miles. But at the same time, in a very strange and kind of nihilistic way, I kind of liked it. It kind of feels like you're paying a price for just how special this is. It's got like supercar vibes in that sense. And honestly, the amount of attention this thing gets. I had a kid on the M1 roll his window down, ask us to slow down, and then just start chatting to us. <laughs> but for a lot of people, I just think it'll be too much. It's too much hot hatch. So the idea of this is to start a discussion, yeah? For me, the Aboth here proves that this quote, new era of fun to drive, powered by electric, probably isn't gonna be anywhere near as depressing as you might've assumed. I actually think that one day the benefits could outweigh the negatives. Could. So that's that. I'd love to know what you think about this whole setup, what you think about the future of EV hot hatches, and whether this whole thing's worked, to be honest. It's an interesting question though, right? Where are things going? Let us know in the comments. I'm gonna get hammered for this, aren't I, Joe? You're gonna get tortured. Yeah.